What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now having a look at what is going on with Bitcoin, what's interesting is we're seeing Bitcoin pump and this is even after the fake ETF news. Now we haven't gotten back up to the top of that ETF pump. That got us to about $30,500. But if we actually have a look right here, what you can see is that we actually have put in a short-term higher high, right? Now, of course, if we go way back, we still have this area up here that we need to clear, but you could see that we are distinctively still putting in this trend of higher highs right here thus far, right? And higher lows right here. Now, why exactly is this happening considering the fact that we did have a ETF sort of uh, fake news come out, right? It wasn't real. They didn't actually approve the ETF, but yet Bitcoin is still kind of pumping anyway. Do you think it's because people kind of woke up and realized, hey, it's not priced in and there was that little sense of FOMO or is there something else? Because also what's interesting is we're seeing Bitcoin have this pump and at the same time, we've had the S&P over here actually putting in two straight red days. So again, we're having that sort of disassociation between the S&P and Bitcoin, right? We're having that potential decoupling. Now, of course, a lot could happen. Keep in mind, you know, it is the end of the week and there is something that we have been waiting for that we're not, we don't really have that full confirmation yet, of course. So, you know, I want to celebrate just as much as anybody else. This is exciting to see this price action. But again, there's something very specific that we're waiting for. And I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. And of course, if this does happen, well, it could be absolute fireworks for Bitcoin. So I'm going to talk about all that today and also discuss the fact that there is sort of something that's happening next week that was a little bit unexpected over, you know, in the US. And what does that mean for everybody? Well, well, we'll discuss the implications of that as well. So obviously this video is coming out at a different time. As you guys know, I'm not, uh, I'm not in the US right now. So turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss these updates. They could come out at different times. So let's dive in. Let's have a look a little bit right here. And again, if you're not subscribed, well, definitely consider it, guys, because it's getting pretty interesting. So if we have a look really quick before I get into everything, I did just want to point out the fact that just from a technical standpoint here, we had pointed out that we did have this um, we did have this buy signal over here on the hash ribbon indicator, which has been accurate over 88% of the time, which which is pretty good statistics when you know you're talking about trading and things like that. And you know, obviously a lot of these Bollinger bands, once they get to these really tight positions, they do tend to break to the upside. In fact, in both of these cases, they did break to the upside. And we have another Bollinger band tightening happening right now, which is why we are expecting a potential violent move, right? So I do want to get into all that in just a bit. Again, very, very interesting how the stock market, uh, S&P specifically, has been trading down. So, you know, what is the deal right here? Well, obviously, as you can see, look at this interest just over the past 12 months for the Bitcoin spot ETF. And right here, uh, I'm not even sure if I'm in your in the way over here. Obviously, this data is still not new, but I mean, you can see right here, you know, we're down around 13, 9, 15, and boom, we just absolutely skyrocket. So this is some of the highest levels. And, you know, we can go back even farther on this. We can go back to, you know, five years of this for Bitcoin. And I mean, there's obviously no question about it. This is the most interested people have been for spot Bitcoin ETFs. And you know, there are some people out there that think that it's not going to be good for crypto and Bitcoin, but you know, I mean, we've gone over that a lot of times, but if we do hop in over here, one of the big things that came out was Gary Gensler. He had this interview and they were talking about not appealing last week, but they're reviewing multiple ETF products. And when approved, it will be uh, it will trade on the stock exchanges. So just watch this clip right now, and I think you're going to understand why people are starting to get that FOMO. But is it still ongoing since so, you didn't appeal? We didn't appeal last Friday. I think that's accurate. Um, so you could but, still in the but, future in another but, form. But what we have in front of us, just so that the viewing public understands, we have not one, but multiple, I think it's eight or ten filings that the staff and ultimately the commission is considering for what's called exchange traded products for mm -hmm. for bitcoin to be in a in a in a security so the bitcoin would be held and then there would be something called an exchange traded product and that would trade on various stock exchanges and those filings are in front of us i can't prejudge any one of them but there's 8 or 10 that we're looking at well there is a large number and there is kind of a narrative in this market and I I wonder if you could put it to rest that someone's going to get to go first. Is that likely to happen or is it likely to be a group approval? If you're going to have one, a, a bunch of products could be approved at the same time. Uh, again, I, I, 
I'm not going to prejudge. The staff's doing work on those uh, multiple filings. So also you could see that there was this Bitcoin hitting 30,000 amid spot ETF amendments from BlackRock and Fidelity. So what this is really showing people is essentially that Hey, they're working with them this time, right? You know, the SEC was so quick to just deny, reject, deny, reject. And now, you know, they're actually in talks. They're figuring out ways to make this work. And this is the most positive bullish sentiment that we've seen in a while. You can actually see right here, this was according to JP Morgan, that the SEC is likely gonna approve multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs soon, given that it didn't appeal the recent ruling. And they say the timing of the ETF approval remains unclear, but should happen within months and most likely be before January 10th of next year, which is the final deadline of ARK Invest and 21 shares applications. This is the earliest among the various final deadlines faced by the SEC across spot Bitcoin ETF applications. And, you know, just to kind of point this out here, like Ki Young Ju pointed out over at CryptoQuant, you know, Bitcoin spot ETFs could increase the market cap by one trillion, which is in insane. But if 150 billion in fresh capital enters the Bitcoin market, it could increase the market cap by 450 billion to 900 billion, basically doubling the price of Bitcoin. And I'm telling you, these moves can happen very fast. That's the thing. People get bored, they get complacent, they stop paying attention. And then all of a sudden you just get these unbelievable, just catastrophic, no, not catastrophic, actually, well, catastrophic if you're a bear, right? But um, monumental moves, insane god candles, they call them, to the upside, right? And again, a lot of people, they think that, oh, if the institutions were going to come in or, or if these, uh, you know, old school investors were going to come in, they would have already came in. Well, I, I can just point out to this right here, this interview over in Kitco News with Larry Lapard, which, by the way, stick around. We're going to get back to Larry in just a bit. But, you know, he's been around the game for a long time. He's been a gold bug, bug for a long time. And even he explains the fact that there are people that simply just do not trust the instruments that are available right now. And as, as crazy as it sounds to us, because we've been in crypto for how many years, but these people are waiting for this type of an approval. And as you know, and as you and I have discussed, I believe Bitcoin is the faster horse and a better long-term hold, but it's not for everybody because not everybody can tolerate the volatility. I mean, I have clients in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they don't want to have 70% drawdowns. And therefore I manage a fund that's both gold and silver and Bitcoin. But the point is that Bitcoin... Um, you know, we'll get there and it will move and it'll move hard. As you also know, I'm sure you'll point out the, you know, the ETF approval is a really big deal. I mean, notice how much it bounced just on the rumor. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ETF approval will bring a lot of money into Bitcoin. And Michael Saylor does an excellent job of making the point that it's very rare that you see an opportunity like this where, you know, there's a lot of money that's going to come by an asset, but it can't buy it today because, in fact, I was just talking to a very, very wealthy individual earlier today. And I said, I said, have you bought Bitcoin? He goes, no, I know I should. And I really want to, but I don't want to get a Trezor. I don't want to do cold storage. I don't trust myself to manage the keys. I don't want to put it on an exchange. I'm just waiting for the ETF. Mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, yeah. And, and you know what? I think there are a lot of people who fall into that bucket. So, yeah. um, so that's where kind of Bitcoin is. Another thing that actually was pretty positive for the space was that the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit has been dropped, like Altcoin Daily had pointed out. Major win for the XRP Army. In a landmark SEC surrender, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Executive Chairman Chris Larson are cleared of all baseless allegations. Now, of course, there's always got to be somebody that has the conspiracy or the negativity. For example, Catherine Kirkpatrick says maybe the SEC has voluntarily dismissed the case against Ripple senior execs. This means that they can proceed to appeal the Ripple decision much sooner. Otherwise, they would have to wait until the conclusion of the trial in the late spring. So, I mean, is this the situation or is it just, it's just kind of hard to digest the good news, right? I mean, people have just been really just beat down. You know, a lot of people bought during the all-time high and, you know, they're just freaked out. And it's like the same way, like when you get overly bullish, you get really, really, really bullish. Everybody's calling for 100K, 150K. You can't believe it when the price starts to fall. And the same way, when price starts to get super bearish, people can't believe it's bullish. And I, I gotta tell you, man, I, I don't wanna name any names, but man, there are some people out there that I know personally that have channels that like are influencers, whatever you wanna call them, that are just still so bearish right now and I, my mind is blown i just don't know what to say uh, to, 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 i mean literally from fifteen thousand five all the way up to 30 still bearish still bearish I, I i don't understand it i just don't get it 
I don't get it. I don't know. Tell me why. Tell me why. I don't know. But, um, you know, getting back here again, you can see that we have had this breakout. Now, of course, um, you know, th anything could happen by the end of today. This is on the four hour. So, at, you know, when you do have these types of breakouts, it's very common to see them come down and retrace. And people call them, oh, it's a failed breakout. It's not a failed breakout. You're having the retest. So, you know, if Bitcoin wanted to fall down here, uh, you know, on the daily, even down a little below 29,000, maybe to 28,900, 28,800, that would be perfectly fine. But remember, as we had pointed out, Bitcoin essentially was putting in this small four hour flag, right? Right. And, there, you know, OK, even though technically you want to see, uh, you know, some people would basically say, for example, you know, when you have a flag like this, it's more bullish. But of course, these are all just percentages. Right. I mean, nothing is going to be 100 percent. But when we had the bullish news, we had this wick, we had the price action. It could only be assumed based on what we were seeing. And of course, you should never make assumptions when trading. But, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of just be realistic and just kind of think about what you're seeing here. And, you know, you're seeing the momentum, you're seeing the volume. And right here, look at this. I mean, yeah, we had a little bit of a dip below this, but right here was an excellent opportunity for a play. And before I continue with this, I just want to say one thing. I know a lot of people, they like to play the breakouts, right? I don't like to play the breakouts because as you can see right here, fake out, fake out, fake out right? A massive fake out, right? So really what you want to do is once we were down below this basis, that was really the area that I had been saying, if you wanted to start putting in a long or, you know, that, that really would be the area because it's a safer play. You really don't want a long resistance and short support. I know some people do that. I don't trade like that for me. It's too risky. And also I have a lot of people that watch my channel and I don't want to suggest you do something that is a very risky play. I don't, that's not me. I don't want to do that to you guys. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, so right now, if you didn't get into it, what would you be waiting for? Well, could we just continue blasting off? Of course, yeah. But realistically, you'd wait for a retest of this area, you know, right in here, which again would be around 28,800 to 900, right? And if you want, you could put your, your stop loss below 28, right? That would sort of be the play. Again, guys, if you do want to learn how to trade, make sure that you check out the tutorial above. And, you know, I do, a lot of people, they, they don't really know where to trade. So there's a few options. Obviously, uh, Apex Pro is completely decentralized. It's totally non-KYC. There is absolutely no limit to deposits and withdrawals. And the fees are incredibly low. Like I'm talking literally pennies, like 30, 40 cents to trade on Apex. So if you guys do want to check that out below, and then also if you don't feel comfortable using that, then obviously CoinCatch is a more modern uh, uh, centralized exchange. If you guys want, they do have 100,000 daily withdrawal and there is no KYC as of right now. But obviously, um, you know, I can't tell you guys what to do, but, <clears throat> you know, take that with a grain of salt, whatever you guys want to do. Um, I do have those bonuses below and all the free tutorials, but you know, let's getting back to this. Uh, I don't want to get too off topic. Um, just, there's a lot of people asking me where can they trade? Because again, you know, a lot of, you know, exchanges have not been too friendly, but over here, what we can see is that we do have this 200 daily and we did have this 100 and the 100 was the area where, remember I said we were kind of, we were kind of bouncing around in here again right? And what we did was we're actually using this now as support. But look at this. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this crazy how the charts work, guys? Look at where we're having this issue, right? What are we doing? We're testing the top of this parallel channel, right? So it wouldn't be insane again to have that cool off, to come back here. And wow, look at where that brings us. 28,800, 28,900 area, right? So again, I'm not saying we're going to go down there, but again, the likelihood on these types of moves is to, you know, you move up, and then you have a little bit of a retest and then you move up and you have a little bit of a retest, right? I don't think we're officially in the parabolic phase just yet, but again, like we were saying with this EMA ribbon, you know, going back, this EMA ribbon has historically been an amazing indication of whether or not Bitcoin is in a bullish or a bearish trend. And we have never seen this ever in the history of Bitcoin ever, ever have a, you know, flip to the, t to the upside and then have a fake out flip to the downside. We've never seen that happen. Now I'm not saying there couldn't be a first, but we were kind of, a little bit suspicious about this, right? And as everyone was starting to get scared, what happened? We put in this candle right here. We closed above the 89. Again, look, here's the retest, right? Here's where you retest because nothing goes up in a straight line and boom. Now we are right here back again, back holding above this again. And, you know, you know, and talking about these parallel channels as well, you can see over here on the CME, 
If I zoom in right here, again, look at where we're having that bit of rejection, right? Th this chart is a little less clean because it's futures and it doesn't trade on weekends and it doesn't trade all day. So that's why this chart is a little more sloppy looking than the rest. But I mean, you kind of get the general idea, you know, trending upwards, right? Putting in higher highs, putting in higher lows, right? We were at the bottom of the, the heart line here. We're at the top of the heart line here, right? And, um, you know, eventually we'll probably end up breaking back into that. Now, I'm not calling for immediate, you know, super pump to the top. Right? If we have a look right here, what we tend to see after these bear markets is we have this sort of accumulation, this slow grind up, and we sort of just dance around the 111 uh, DMA, right? You can see right here, this is actually the Pi cycle indicator. You, Pi cycle indicator, you can get this over at uh, Gla uh, Glassnode, which I do enjoy their charts from time to time. And, you know, zooming in right here, as you guys can see, what are we doing? We're just kind of dancing around it, right? Sometimes it's resistance, sometimes it's support, but I wouldn't really expect to deviate too far off of this. The only really times that you really deviate deviate really far um, is either when you're in a major, major bull trend or, you know, something back here where, you know, you just have this crazy capitulation or, you know, you have this black swan or you have this X FTX, right? And, and all of these things are usually related to the end of the markets or unexpected black swans, right? And then again, once you get up uh, above it, well, you're, you're, you're definitely in bull territory. So you can see that we're dancing around, but we're not up to the 350, this purple line. So again, this is showing us that we're still quite early, but but it is starting to favor the bulls. And the big, big uh, kahuna over here, the one that I've really been looking at is essentially where we're having all of these cross, like you could see right here, look at where all of these lines intersected, right? This was major, major resistance right here. I mean, this should have, this should have theoretically been quite bad for Bitcoin, right? When you have all these moving averages, all here acting as your uh, resistance. And what happened? As soon as we hit it, look at this, Bitcoin freaked everybody out. Bitcoin fell 23%. Now I know on this chart, it doesn't look like much, but obviously when it was happening, you know, it felt, it, it, you know, it, it was a lot to fall 23%. And look at that guys, we never went back below these range lows. And now we're sitting above all of them and we're sitting above this major, major downwards parallel channel. And this is a parallel channel that you can argue that formed, started its formation all the way back in January of 2021. So, I mean, just kind of, you know, just seeing how much that is, you know, coming out here, that's literally uh, 1,015 days, 1,015 days. So I don't know, do the math, divide that by 365 for years. But this is a very, very, very long time that we've been in this channel. And you can see right here, we are, uh, you know, of course it's not official yet, the week is not over, but I'm telling you guys, it, you know, if we have this, uh, if we have this bump and run, man, right here, we have this coming down, we had this holding us down as resistance, we can break and hold above this level, which this level, in case anyone is wondering, is 28,628. So of course we did say there was the possibility of a retest, but if we can hold above that level, then, you know, coming down here, bouncing back up again, yeah, I mean, I would I would say that the nail in the coffin would be done for the bears. Again, market cipher, which is a great indicator. If you guys don't have market cipher, yes, it's it, you do have to pay for this indicator, but my God, it's such a good indicator, guys. I really, really like to look for the confluence between this and the traditional. I do have a link below, by the way, if you guys are interested. Um, there are occasionally bonuses. I'm not sure if they have a bonus going on right now, but yeah, if you want, that, that link is below uh, under under indicators. But you can see that, you know, we have a longer trend of this, uh, you know, anchor waves moving into trigger waves and a shorter trend of the anchor waves on the trigger waves to the downside. So the longer trend, in my opinion, always takes over the smaller trend. And of course, you know, we got this green dot, which I believe we've only had four in history. So, I mean, you know, just kind of take that also with a grain of salt, but you know, it tends to mark the bottom. It didn't mark the exact bottom here, but the bottom did come very soon from that point. And, you know, holding our, our major trends upwards, of course, the only thing that is, you know, just a little concerning again, is you see this area that we're in right here. So it's, we have this blue zone, but then we also have this area right here where we had a lot of buying. Every time we'd fall below it, we'd get bought up, we'd fall below it, we'd get bought up. And it was acting as our support for quite some time. And that level is sitting at roughly $29,367. So as you guys can see, we're just barely trying to break back into that again. Really what you wanna do 
um, as far as just this very, very simple price level is concerned. You know, if we do fall back down, whatever, I don't really know what we're gonna do. I'm not, I'm not like Nostradamus here. I'm just looking based on the trends, but you know, we could bounce around. And if we came down here and had a beautiful retest of around this $32,941 area, then that is the point where I would say not only have the bears officially won, but at the same time, you're probably never going to see these levels again. And I hate to break it to you guys. You know, you're probably not going to get that 25,000 or lower Bitcoin ever again. Again, going back to is Bitcoin a flight to safety? Well, I do want it to just kind of hop back over again. I told you we were going to come back over to our buddy, uh, Lawrence Lepard. And, you know, this is kind of what he feels is going on right now in the world. Does Bitcoin pass the safe haven test if this develops at a relatively fast pace? Do it's a, it's people, are people going to go to Bitcoin in a very, very existential crisis, potentially for the economy, potentially for people? Is Bitcoin proven enough as a safe haven for this scenario it, that could unfold? It's, it's, a, it's a great question. And I think the answer is we don't know. But I think I think in, in general, I think the answer is yes. Um you know, the, the, uh, I mean, there's two other kind of knocks on it. One is that the governments are all going to outlaw it or two that, it, you know, and if we, if we lose electricity and the internet, it doesn't work. Well, if that's the case, we're back in the stone age. And I, I, I don't, I don't think, you know, the world is going to that place and I don't think governments can stop it because it's, it's really kind of robust in terms of its ability to, you know, to, to, to thwart government, you know, attempts at, at grabbing and controlling it. So, um, but but has it been in people's minds? Is it a safe haven? Well, in Bitcoiners' minds, it is. I mean, I think it's one of the safest assets out there, um, and you know, it's also a lot easier to move and and, and store. I mean, right. I, you know, I mean, try to take a billion dollars worth of gold from point A to point B. That's not easy. You need a jet. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I and you know, you, can, you with twelve words, you can hop on an airplane and go to any place in the world you know, and reestablish your Bitcoin wallet and you've got your wealth. So, um, and, you know, by the way, a lot of people in China were doing that in the, in the early days of Bitcoin. It was being used for that because they, they had capital controls and they couldn't get out. So, um, you know, as, as everybody knows, or most people who've listened to me know, I'm, 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 I love them both, okay? Gold is analog sound money, proven 5,000 years old. And, uh, you know, it was the best form of money that existed in the world until Bit came, Bitcoin came along. And it is still less volatile than Bitcoin. And for some people, that's that's a real advantage. They don't want to ride the up and down cycles within Bitcoin. Um, if you look at the actual characteristics of Bitcoin as money, and it is being adopted as money, in my opinion, um, it beats gold on just about every front. Um, it's easier to store. It's easier to transfer. Um, it's easier to verify. Um, it's 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 more easy. It's easier to divide, um, etc. And so. I think when 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 the people who set up the Bitcoin network, and I do think Satoshi was a group of people who then decided to go silent. Um, I think I've met a few of them actually. But um, wow, well, when, that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah we, we, we talk about that. When um, uh, when when Bitcoin when the Bitcoin network got developed, something important was developed, and and it's and so and sadly, a lot of gold people think oh, all this crypto stuff is bullshit. And and you know what? They're right. All crypto stuff is bullshit except Bitcoin. Because what Bitcoin did, what that system does and did, is we created legitimate, provable digital scarcity. And before that time, that had never existed. So this is an invention. It's like when the Wright brothers created an airplane, they created a device that would allow human beings to go up in the air and travel. And, you know, from the Wright brothers to, you know, the Concord, you know, was a bunch of years, but it was amazing the developments that took place. And you might ask, well, why does digital scarcity matter? Digital scarcity matters because the most important characteristic of sound money is that it's scarce. And until gold, uh, until Bitcoin came along, gold was the element in the in the universe that was most scarce. You know, the supply only grew at one and a half percent a year. You know, it was verifiable. I mean, admittedly, you had to sometimes X-ray it so that it didn't have tungsten inside it and had problems in verifying its purity. But but you know, suffice it to say, there was no other element like gold, and that's why six thousand years of evolution it became kind of the preeminent form of money. Bitcoin, in my opinion, is really just digital gold with better characteristics. So the thing that could uh, kind of throw a little bit of a wrench in the gears is of course this unexpected hearing on cryptocurrencies, which is gonna be held by uh, the House of Representatives next week. Now, without going into detail, because I don't really wanna say certain words on this channel, 
but we know there's a lot of global conflict going on. And we know that these guys like to say that, um, you know, they use cryptocurrencies to fund things, okay? Um, I think you know what I'm talking about. So they're having this hearing to discuss that. Again, is this just going to be another reason for Elizabeth Warren and her anti-Bitcoin army to step in and say, see, I told you, all they're doing is using it for illegal activities. But I mean, come on. We know that the majority of illegal activities are done using fiat. That's, that's not something that is new to anybody. And again, this is like what I always like to say, you know, it's a tool, right? Bitcoin, you know, uh, blockchain, right? It's a tool, okay? Uh, a knife is a tool, right? You can use it to cut, you know, cut your steak, you know, you can use it to, you know, cut some rope or you can use it to do something else, right? You could say the same thing for a hammer. You could say the same thing for a shovel, right? It's just a tool and it's how you use it. So should we, you know, should we ban shovels because one time like somebody used it as a weapon? You know what I'm trying to say here? So again, I understand where they're coming from. I'm hoping that next week this doesn't turn out to be something that does affect crypto in a negative uh, limelight. But again, you know how it goes with these guys. Uh, sometimes they'll just use any excuse to, uh, Continue pushing the anti-crypto narrative. So ultimately, that is it for me. Again, you know, it is exciting to see this, you know, and it's not impossible to see some kind of a correction. Could we continue? Of course, but you know, I'm not, you know, again, nothing moves up in a straight line. So, uh, but, but, it, but again, it is favoring the bulls right now. It is favoring the bulls. I mean, now, now you, you, you got to push us. I mean, we have to go. Well, we'd have to go below the 25,300 Terra Luna crash wick level now. Which, which is, you know, that's quite a fall from this level. So, I mean, just keeping our eyes on it. But ultimately, guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos. Again, I know this video came out a little bit earlier than usual. So, you know, get subscribed, turn on that bell notification. Um, you know, I'm, I'm even thinking I'm kind of, kind of got a lot of free time out here while I'm waiting on some of these business things. Who knows? I, I, may, I may even start uploading multiple videos. Who knows, guys? So uh, really great seeing you. Hope you're having a great week. Lots of exciting things ahead. Now is not the time to be scared. Now is not the time to be freaking out. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. So thank you so much for coming back. You are awesome. You are the best. You're, you're the greatest person ever. And I hope you guys have a wonderful start to your weekend. Remember, if you do want to learn how to trade, we have these tutorials that are popping up right here right now all of those bonuses are below and again there's the decentralized apex literally totally decentralized if you're comfortable using that it's all usdc and then there's also uh coin catch and and femex is pretty good too they're really good uh they they still have a really good uh amount i think it's fifty thousand a day if you want to withdraw it so that's it for me guys thank you so much for coming back to the channel you guys rock again i'll see you next time and of course peace out